There we go. So we're going to kick things off. And I want you guys to all, we're, we're looking at a football field, right? From the top down. On the left, we've got the people who are not ready to buy. And on the right-hand side, we've got the people who are ready to buy. Okay. Now, a lot of people aren't really clear on how content actually fits into an ad strategy or a business strategy, right? And so what I want to do is I want to give you guys a real visual of what is going to happen over the next several months. Now notice I'm not saying days, I'm not saying weeks, over the next several months, as you begin to not only launch content along with my ecosystem, but also as you are going to start doing more and more content. I, want to, I wanted to give you guys the clearest visual that I could of what is gonna happen, okay? So at any given time, right, we have people who are ready to buy what we're selling, and then we've got people who are not ready to buy. Everyone would agree with that, right? Now, let me actually, there we go. The people who are ready to buy, that number is about two to 3% of people at any given time. There's always gonna be on the other end of the field, the people who aren't ready to buy. That's gonna be make up 97 to 98% of our audiences, okay? Now, what a funnel is built to do, we're talking about a direct response funnel, like a webinar, an ebook funnel, any type of lead gen funnel, whether it is a low ticket offer, right? There's always going to be people who are ready to buy. And that's how, that's, that's what most people who are using funnels, that's who they're trying to get, right? Because they want the people who are ready to buy. That's why they use conversion campaigns because Facebook will find the people that are most likely to convert. The problem with that is that those audiences go by really fast, right? If you launch a funnel, like even just something like a power offer, remember there's only gonna be two to 3% of people at any given point in any given audience that's going to be ready to buy, okay? This is the most expensive strategy to do, right? How many of you guys have ever tried to launch a funnel and you're like, whoa, this is getting really expensive, right? Or hey, I need to I need to test new audiences because this audience is puttering out. It's because the funnel is built to go and find only those 2 to 3% of people, okay? So what my strategy does I'm going to show you right here because I think that this is one of the best ways to explain it, okay? So on the right-hand side we've got the people who are ready to buy. This is who every single marketer is trying to target, right? We're going to target the people on the left with our content, which makes up my ecosystem, okay? So imagine this, right? There's a conveyor belt that's going to stretch across the field, okay? Now, along this conveyor belt, at every single five-yard line, there is a piece of content. So there's going to be 20 all the way across, right? And so what we're gonna do is we are actually, right, going to front load the conveyor belt. These are the people, remember, who are not ready to buy, okay? As they see content, right, there's gonna be more people that are stacked on that conveyor belt. Now, here's the thing. This visual that you guys see right here this is where most of you are right now, even if you're three to four months in of doing content. Here's why. If you are doing organic content only, the conveyor belt's gonna go super slow, isn't it? Right, it's probably gonna go like two miles per hour. If you're only spending a dollar, $2 a day on ads, that conveyor belt's gonna go pretty slow, right? If you are only doing one or two pieces of content a week, that conveyor belt's gonna go super, super slow, right? But there's always a couple of levers that we could actually pull in order to make that conveyor belt go faster. We can spend more money. 
we can put out more content. We can make more direct offers, right? There's a, those are a couple of things that we can do to make that conveyor belt go faster. Here's the thing. A lot of you guys are giving up when you're just here. You have not even given the strategy an appropriate amount of time to get enough of those clients across the football field, right? You know, a lot of times people say people quit when they're like, what, five feet away from the finish line. I think it's opposite of that. I think most people give up when they're just like five feet away from the starting point. They try something for seven days and they're like, oh, this doesn't work. They try something for 30 days. Oh, this doesn't work. Oh, they try it for 90 days. Oh, this doesn't work. What I like to teach my students is it's 90 days to data. It's not 90 days to success. It's 90 days to data. Because here's the thing. Let me ask you a question right now. If you put out one piece of content every single day for the next 90 days, do you not think that you are probably going to start to see similarities in the audience and the content that is resonating with your audience the most? Okay. If you run this strategy with the appropriate number of time, this is what happens. This is my business right now. Like I have got conveyor belts, not only one, I've got conveyor belts of people right now that come to my inbox every single day. Now, total transparency for those of you guys who are just joining us, I've been doing this for six years, right? So I've, I've had a lot of time for this to actually compound, right? Einstein said that, you know, com the compound effect is like the eighth wonder of the world. That's definitely true. That is definitely what I'm feeling right now, right? We have a wait list for the $7 program. There's a wait list for Lean on Laurel. And so I'm definitely feeling the compound effect of this. And so that's how I know it works. This isn't theory. This isn't me, oh, I saw this on a webinar and I'm gonna teach it to my students. This is literally what's happening in my business. And it's one of those things that has made my business pretty much fail-proof over the last several years, right? Everything, yes, so Tina just said, you worked hard for this, I have. But here's the thing, have I really worked hard or have I just worked smart, right? You know, it's one of those things, you know, um, my mentor and I just finished recording a 12 video series, which by the way, you guys are going to get access to that here pretty soon that we're going to, we're going to uh, release to you guys. But we were actually just talking about that most people who are actually like in this specific thing, they get bored easily because it's mundane right? I know a lot of my Lean on Laurel students, they're like, oh my God, Laurel, like, I feel like I should be doing more when really the work is just being consistent. It really can be because it feels like you should be doing more because everyone is telling you, you need to do more. You need to build a funnel. You need to do this. You need to be here. You need to be everywhere, right? It can be really, really overwhelming, right? But what if I told you guys that legit, like the process is the shortcut, like literally just doing the work is the shortcut. Okay. So this is what my strategy will do for your business. It will literally deliver consistently people ready to buy on a conveyor belt. This is the cheat code. It's the ultimate cheat code, right? Because while marketers are struggling to target that two to 3% at any given time, the platform, no matter whether it's YouTube, TikTok, Facebook, wherever you're executing this strategy, it's going to consistently start delivering ready to buy clients at a much lower cost. The day that my business hit a million dollars, it was in September, I want to say 2021, September 2021, something like that, a million, a million dollars. And I had spent less than $37,000 in ads. It was because I rigged the game to utilize a cheaper ad strategy in order to build this machine, okay? So what we're gonna talk about today is the framework that you need to execute when it comes to doing content. How many of you guys noticed that uh, the internet marketing game is changing really, really fast lately, right? 
Um, there's a lot of people who are really nervous right now. A lot of people who are used to making seven figures a month are no longer making seven figures a month. A lot of people who are used to making six figures a month. One of the reasons being, and we'll talk a little bit more about that as we go through the, through the training today, but because of market sophistication and everyone's using the same one line offer, right? Thanks to Mr. Joel Irway. Thanks to, you know, Alex Harmozy's Grand Slam offer. Everyone's offer is kind of looking the same. It's like, I can guarantee this results are these results or you don't pay. If I offer to do X, Y, Z in the next 30 days, right? Everyone's offers are kind of starting to look the same. And so we're going to, I'm going to show you guys some ways that you're going to be able to stand out in even today's market. Because here's the thing, the barrier to success is super, super low even today, if you know how to execute what we're gonna talk about, okay? Now, one of the things that I also want to point out that it's not content versus ads, because a lot of times my students are like, well, should I be doing this as content or should I be doing ads? Content is ad, okay? There's no difference in my language, I use content and ads like they are the same thing to me. Every single piece of content gets turned into some sort of ad. As a matter of fact, whether or not you put money on it, it is still, right? It is still an ad. It's a free ad, right? And social media is full of free advertisement if you know how to rig this game, okay? So I know another question I get a lot, Laurel. When I do this content, do I put it on Facebook? Do I put it on TikTok? Do I put it, it does not matter. The platform does not matter. It does not matter whether you execute this. What matters is that you know where your audience's attention is right now. Where are your audience's eyeballs? That is where you need to do it. I make it easy on myself. Any piece of content that I do, I just put it across every single platform. That's just the way that I do it. I don't reformat things for this or that. Like, I don't spend time doing that. Me and my wife run our entire business. I don't have time to sit there and be like, well, I'm going to create this type of content for this and this type of content for that. Does it work? It probably does, but it's not needed. My business, we've made over $3 million and we don't do any of those fancy things, right? A lot of you guys probably sitting in the room right now are solopreneurs. Am I right? Like you just want to make enough money to live a freaking fantastic life, spend time with your family and never have to ever worry about money again, right? That's me. Like I'm not interested in building and scaling and all of these things. Like I just want to, and here's the thing. If you want to scale millions, millions of dollars, like sure, when you get to a certain point, should you hire a content crew and do all of these different optimizations? Absolutely. But most of the people sitting in the room right now, this will do the trick, okay? This will do the trick. Now, I'm gonna challenge you guys during this because you're gonna hear me say a lot of some things that are probably opposite of what you've been told. And again, this is just, I want to make sure that everyone understands because there's a lot of tactical, strategic things inside the $7 program. Today, we're going to say a little principle-based. I'm going to still go some strategy and tactics that, that's going to help you execute this. But I think the more that you guys can understand why this strategy actually works and why it is the ultimate cheat code, I think you're going to be in a better position. So I'm going to challenge you guys just a little bit today, okay? Now, here's the thing. Your audience isn't looking for the perfect offer. I know that you guys think they are, right? Everyone is trying to beat each other's offer. You know, if someone's offering to do it in 10 days, someone's going to come out and say, well, I can do that in three. Someone's going to say that I can do it better. Or I can get you more leads. I can get you more clients, right? How many of you guys see those offers and you just, it just, gla you glaze over them now because you see so many of them in your newsfeed, okay? Now, what I'm gonna tell you is actually something that is gonna be really good news for you guys, right? Because we think differently, right? That's why you guys are in my program, right? I, I have a different brain than a lot of internet marketers, and that's the key. 
A lot of you guys are sitting in this room right now because you were looking for something different. You weren't looking for the best ads program. You were looking for something different because you've already tried all of these other ad programs and they didn't work for you. That is how your audience is right now with what you have to offer. They have tried everything. And whenever we keep putting the same offers in front of the same people, your audience just says, I've already tried that and it didn't work for me. There must be something wrong with me. I suck, right? What your audience wants from you is for you to tell them that this time it's going to be different. This time you're going to get results. And a lot of times that doesn't have anything to do with quote the offer. It has a lot to do with you as a person who's delivering the offer, right? For some of you guys, I am your person to teach you ads. But there are some of you guys who might prefer to learn how to do ads from Dan Henry or Kat Howell or someone else, right? That's how your audience is. You're going to be able to attract people who are going to jive with you. And that's actually good news because then you don't have you can quit beating yourself up trying to come up with the perfect offer because guess what guys, the perfect offer doesn't exist. The perfect offer has everything to do with you and your own personality. It's what makes you, you, right? A lot of you guys are sitting here because you saw my videos and you're like, wow, I resonate with Laurel. She, you know, most of the time doesn't wear makeup. She just is herself, right? That's why a lot of you guys are here. You feel comfortable with me because I'm not in front of some fancy screen talking at you. I feel like, you know, we're having a conversation right now. I don't feel like I'm like, oh, Laurel's talking at her audience. Like, I feel like we're having a conversation right now. Um, and that's what your audience is looking for too. And so that's what, that's what basically the conversation is going to be today is how can you take what I'm going to teach you guys today and actually turn it into something that's a realistic way for you to consistently get clients. That's my goal. Okay. So you can have the perfect hook. You can have the perfect copy. Hell, you could even have, quote, perfect offer. But if you do not present yourself well online, you will never get the client. Personal brands are starting to matter more and more. Now, what do I mean by this? Okay. Now, a lot of us, think about this. A lot of us spend so much time trying to attract and, and think about who's our perfect avatar, right? Right right? That's what every business coach tells you to do. Who's your avatar? Who are you trying to target? A lot of people don't think that the opposite on the other side is also true. You're trying to find the perfect client, but you're not thinking about how your client sees you, right? Kind of gives you a different frame. Are you making yourself be the perfect choice for your ideal client. Because a lot of us spend so much time creating our avatars and, and talking about who do we target? Are we spending enough time making us appear in the manner that our clients expect us to show up? Because I would, I, I would say that a lot of us probably forget that. That like, are we showing our true best selves online? Or are we starting political arguments? Or are we picking fights? Or are we doing a lot of posts that are very negative towards other coaches? Are we doing the actions that our ideal clients would expect us to as a person of authority? And so we have to think about that. Are we showing up the way that our clients would expect? I'll give you guys a perfect example. I had a Lean on Laurel student and he was just like, he, he was doing his 30 days of uh, the first ecosystem audit that we do. And I was looking at all of his videos because he's like, Laurel, like, I don't like, I don't, I don't get it. Like, I'm not having any traction. And he's a fitness coach, right? And I look at his content and I'm like, dude, all of your content, you're sitting at a desk shooting videos. I was like, you're not presenting yourself online in a way that your ideal client would expect you to show up. It's a misalignment. Right. And so we also have to think as much work that we put into finding our target audience, we have to put that work in ourselves too. Are we showing up in a way 
that is attractive to our ideal client. So just some, a little something, something to think about. Okay. Now we're going to, we're going to be a little rough for the next, for the next couple of slides. Okay. Because there's some of you guys who are going to feel a little attacked and a little triggered. Okay. So I'm just pre-warning you guys. Okay. You guys know me for those of you guys who've never been on a workshop. My students say I'm spicy as hell. And so we're just going to, we're just going to, we're you, just be prepared. Some of you guys are going to get triggered by what I'm about to say. Okay. Um, so today's workshop, we're going to solve three problems. Okay. We're going to solve these three problems. And by the end of the workshop, I hope that you will understand. Okay. Here's the one little takeaway. Like I always tell, you know, I always tell Christina, anytime that we're going to a live event, whether I'm doing a live webinar or like when I'm in the audience, right. I'm always looking for that one little thing. That's like, that's it. That's all I need. And I walk away. Right. So I'm hoping that you will get that one little thing that you like, are like, that is the one thing I needed to know. And then you're going to go and you're going to execute. That's what, that's what my hope is. Okay. So today's workshop, problem number one, we're going to solve this. Okay. Most of you guys are not making two to three times less content than your competitors. It's more like 50 to hundred X. And I'm going to give you guys my roadmap in order to change this. Like a lot of you guys think that you're doing a lot when really you're doing a lot less than your competitors. Now, here's the thing. You don't have to do like what Gary Vee says, like you have to do, you know, 20 pieces of content on each platforms every single day. That's, that's a little overwhelming, but I am going to show you guys a way that I do my own content in a way that's less overwhelming, because I think a lot of people think I spend a lot of time creating content and I actually don't. And so I'm actually going to give you guys the actual step-by-step -step framework of how I create every single piece of content and how I leverage it across multiple platforms. Um, problem number two, this is going to be triggering for some of you guys. A lot of you guys are trying to sell a promise that you yourself haven't done before, right? We see this a lot. Okay. Um, but guess what? Even if you are a complete newbie, even if you're completely inexperienced, I'm going to show you guys how to actually still sell what you're selling, but with integrity, because here's the thing. There's a lot of things that you can tell when someone is faking it till they make it. People know it now. It's very, it's very easy for our audience. And it actually shows up in our, like the way that we present ourselves. Remember going back to how we present ourselves online. I could always tell when I see a, a video from someone and I'm like, there are so many signs that this person is full of BS and your audience is seeing it too, right? Remember your audience is comparing you to other people because what, what does Facebook do? What is Facebook advertising? What is its job to do? Facebook advertising's job is to say, okay, this person expressed an interest in this. Now I'm going to show them five or six of the competitors, right? <laughs> Someone clicks on, I'll just pick on Andrea, right? Someone sees Andrea's ad. Facebook's like, oh, this person is interested in this. And they're going to show Andrea's seven competitors to that person in the next two days, right? That's what Facebook ads does. It, it sees, okay, this person is interested in this. And so we have to, at the end of the day, be like, okay. And this is where... We're going to start developing like our own unique stuff. And I'll, I'll show you guys how I did this in the past, right? Because I didn't just all of a sudden show up here and, oh, Laurel's a, a Facebook ads expert for, you know, the coaching space. I wasn't. As a matter of fact, I started out with very little. And I'm going to show you guys how I worked up to being the authority that I am now. So problem number three, most of you guys can't convey to your audience the problems that you solve for them. You know, it's really funny. And this is not to pick on anyone, but... I actually did a post on Facebook. As a matter of fact, I'm going to show it to you guys here in a little bit. And I was talking about, you know, changing what problem do you solve? And someone in the comments was trying to do the exercise. And literally in the post, it says, if you start off saying, I help so-and-so, you're already doing it wrong. And so he's like, hey, Laurel, how's this? And his first line was, I help so-and-so. I'm like, dude, did you not like, if you start off by saying I help so-and-so because it's about you, we want to make it about the client, right? Because here's the thing. When we say things, and this is not me poo-pooing on the value proposition, because by the way, it is super important for us to know who do we help and how do we help them, right? But here's the thing. I think sometimes we assume that people know what problems we solve for them based on that statement. And most of the time we assume wrong. A lot of us aren't clear on what problems that we actually solve. And so today we're going to get clear on that and 
I'm going to even give you guys a, an extra video if you guys haven't seen it on how to actually do that exercise, because at the end of the day, it's all about solving problems. You know, the ultimate cheat code and someone, someone right now, what I'm about to say, someone's going to walk out this room and be like, that's the one thing that I needed to hear. And they're going to leave, which I hope, I hope someone does leave and just go and goes do this. I tell my students, Pamela will tell you, Pamela's in Lean on Laurel. A lot of times I tell students on Voxer, I'm like, if you're confused about what next step you need to take right now, go to your computer, press record and just solve one person's problem. If you did that every single day for the next 90 days, you will get results. You will get clients. Your business will be completely different. If every single day you just press that little live button, right? And then you just go and you solve one person's problem day after day after day. It's very mundane, it can get very boring, but it works. So if that's, if that's all you took away from this workshop today and you did that for 90 days, it was worth your time here. I guarantee it. Okay. So, well, now Laurel told me a whole bunch of stuff that I might have to change, right? So how the heck can you get your foot in the door if you're not the expert or if you're not this? I'm going to tell you guys here in a few. Okay. Now, these are my goals. After doing this for six years, my ultimate goal is I want to be the female Hermosi. Not when it comes to building all of these businesses and acquiring all of these businesses. I want to be the female Hermosi, the female Gary V. That is just the authority where I can just go and help a whole bunch of people get results in their business. That's what I want. That ultimately, that's what that's my goal. I'm at this point right where seven dollar programs on a wait list, lean on laurels on a wait list. I want to make a bigger impact. I want to just put all of my content out there for free and just help as many people as possible. That's my goal, right? But I also have to still do the mundane, right? It's still, I have to keep my programs full, right? I just can't be like, oh, I did it. Deuces, bye. I'm going to go do this other thing, right? No, I still do this. How many of you guys are really, oops. How many of you guys are surprised that I still make it a goal to have a hundred messenger conversations a week. Like how many of you guys think that that's pretty surprising, right? Cause a lot of you guys are telling me, well, Laurel, I don't have time for that. And I'm like, yeah, you do. If I have time for it, you definitely have time for it. That's the cash flow, right? That is the cash flow is conversations are the fastest path to cash. Why do I want to have a hundred messenger conversations a week? Well, it helps me create better content for you guys, right? So for instance, Oh, the person's actually on the call. I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to keep her anonymous, um, but she knows who she is. She's on the call today. We were having a, you know, a chat in messenger on Instagram and she wanted to join lean on Laurel. And I said, well, I said, given the data that you have given me, I don't think lean on Laurel is a good fit for you, but I do have an idea of what your strategy looks like given, and I, I, I took her through the entire diagnostic process that I teach you guys in the organic foundations, the case framework, collect, analyze, um, strategize and execute. Right. And probably today or tomorrow, I am literally going to sit down, record, hit this little thing, right? Fitch just asked, well, how do you solve one person's problem? Okay. Well, I'll give you an example. So she literally has to go back to her nine to five because her network marketing company went bye-bye. Something happened in network marketing. She made six figures in network marketing. It went bye-bye. So now she's temporarily got to go back to a nine to five, but she's extremely good at building lead generation funnels. That's the information, right? So she she's cash flow poor. So she's going back and getting some cash flow. By the way, when people ask me, Laurel, I am desperate for cash flow. What do I do? I tell them to go get a job. Like that literally is, there's no shame in that. Like the only reason I'm sitting here right now is because I had a job the first nine months that my business existed because I was able to go and, and like reinvest all of the money that I was making in my business into hiring a mentor. I'm totally transparent. Like when people tell me they need cash flow, I'm like a part-time job, Uber, some, just something, right? So that you're not dependent, so that you can, so you're not so desperate of, you know, making money. And, you know, I feel, I feel bad, you know? So again, so, my goal is to help her 
solve this one problem. And so what I'm going to do is I'm literally going to do a video. I'm going to hit record and I'm literally going to lay out all of the assets, all of the data that she told me, and I'm going to build her a strategy on camera for everyone to watch because I get, because guess what? That one problem that I'm going to solve for her is probably going to solve 20 other people's problem, right? A lot of times, oops, my best converting content is when I'm literally sitting there building documents for other people. It's my best content. And we'll, we'll talk a little bit about that. But that's why I have those 100 messenger conversations every single week. I get to know more about you. Y'all get to see my expertise in the messenger. Because here's the thing, that person may never join Lean on Laurel. But guess what? When she meets people who need ads help and have the money, guess who she's going to send people to? Because of the goodwill. And that's what I want you guys to understand. Sometimes the return isn't immediate and that's okay, but we have to be okay with it, right? That this strategy isn't that, oh my God, you put $1 into the Facebook ads and you're going to get $2 out. That's not what I built it to do. That's what a funnel is built to do though, right? A lot of people confuse my ecosystem with a funnel. Like it, they think that it replaces a funnel. It does not. It just, we build it around a funnel. So the first step right now, I want everyone to think about this. What's the goal? What are you trying to do right now? Because here's the thing. Before you can build any content strategy, you have to know what your goal is. For me, my goal is to have a hundred conversations. And so every single piece of content that I put out is built to get conversations. Because the sooner that you can figure out what is it that I'm trying to accomplish with my social media strategy, I'll give you guys a, an example. So one of my one of my clients that I help out with her ads, I do her ads for her. She hired a social media person and her goal is to get more booked calls, but she hired a social media team that their KPI was to get her more impressions, was to get her brand awareness, right? There's a misalignment. Her goal at the end of the day is to book calls. And so that social media strategy should have been designed to get my client more calls. And so her ad strategy was here and her social media strategy was there. They need to be like this. They need to be the same. Remember how I told you guys earlier in the call, I don't look at ads versus content. It's all content to me. All content can be ads. So I just want you guys to think about it. Like, what is the goal that you're trying to accomplish? If your goal is trying to accomplish, is trying to get booked calls, that needs to be, that needs to drive your social media strategy. You should be doing every single thing in order to get more booked calls. If conversations get you booked calls, then maybe your social media strategy should be driven to get more conversations, right? So that's what we have to think about. Like whenever I was, the whole goal was to get $7 sales. I created my YouTube strategy to get $7 sales. I created my ads to get $7 sales. I got all of my content going to $7 sales. Now I'm just like, now I just need to have conversations because it's, I know the, the side effect of that is going to keep my programs full. That's how I get clients. So hopefully that makes sense. So frequency, intensity, and purpose. Okay. This is something I learned from my mentor, Nick Peterson. A lot of you guys are doing it out of order. Okay. Now, whenever it comes to creating content, here's how this applies. Okay. Frequency. This is what most of you guys who are sitting in the room right now need. You need frequency, repetition, and you need to master it, okay? Now, I get a lot of people who come into the $7 program and they've never done any content before. They look at my power content framework or my templates and say, I don't like that template. I'm going to do something else. Okay. Okay. The reason that I give you guys templates and frameworks is because you guys need the frequency. Oops, my bad. Because a lot of you guys actually need the frequency, right? You need to master something. Frequency is getting the volume in. And so that's why there's templates. That's why there's frameworks. Once you master frequency, you're putting out one, two pieces of content every single day. You probably start to get this kind of rhythm and you're like, ooh, 
I'm going to play with this humble brag a little bit. I'm going to play with Laurel's promise of value. I'm going to do something. I'm going to try something a little bit different. I'm going to put in my own little flair, right? That's intensity. Intensity is putting your own style, your own you into the framework. A lot of you guys are trying to do that too fast. I get so many people who come into the program and they're like, I don't like Laurel's messenger framework, so I'm going to make up my own. And then they go and they post in the group. I had 20 conversations. This doesn't work. I'm like, you weren't following my framework. You did what you wanted to do. Master the one that's put in place that has been tried and true, right? Over the last six years, we've had over 14,000 people come to the program. We've got plenty of data that proves that that messenger framework works really freaking well, right? But that's what, that's what I mean by like frequency and intensity. First, you have to do frequency. Get really good at being on video. Learn the scripts, learn the framework. By the time that it's time for intensity, you don't have to write a script. You can literally turn that camera on and just do it, right? But it takes practice. And so that's what, that's what this flow is. Frequency, intensity, and then through doing the work, you're going to find your purpose. You're going to figure out your purpose. Who are you helping? How are you helping them? A lot of times people try to do purpose first. A lot of times people try to do intensity first. We have to do them in a certain order because frequency intensity produces purpose. Whenever I first started, I was not planning to do ads in the online space at all. As a matter of fact, my whole thing was working with um, brick and mortar businesses. But through frequency, intensity, and purpose, you guys picked me as your person. And so my purpose became, I'm going to help as many people in the online space launch these ads. But it wasn't always that way. It was through frequency intensity, I found my purpose. So how the heck can you get your foot in the door if you're just starting out? Well, I'm glad you asked. So I want you guys to think about this. A lot of you guys are trying to offer way too much, okay? Now really pay attention to what we're going to talk about here. It's because whenever I first started my business, all I had was a single tactic, a $5 video ad. That's what I was doing over at the TV show I worked on. That's what I did at CBS. I literally launched these $5 ads in order to get new shows promoted, news programs promoted, and got more eyeballs on the 11 o'clock news. Simple $5 video ads. And so literally, I taught it over and over and over again dozens of different ways, right? It all goes back to what problem do you solve? Well, a $5 video ad, I was like, I literally, and this is like a really great exercise that I think will help you guys figure this out because a lot of times people in the beginning, I'm going to back up here just a little bit. In the beginning, we need to try a lot of different things. Like I know a lot of people say niche down, I say niche down based on problems that you solve versus a certain demographic. Like what is the problem that you solve, right? A $5 video ad can solve a problem for a chiropractic office who's struggling to get walk-ins. A $5 video ad can solve a problem for a person who's getting thousands of, thousands of leads through a webinar but isn't booking calls. A $5 video ad can take a number three TV station in third position can bring it to number one in its market. You see how I'm still using the same one tactic, but solving a lot of different types of problems with that same thing. That's what I did. I showed up every single day. I went live and I just taught all of the different ways that I could solve a problem with a $5 ad. Because a lot of times people think, oh, well, Laurel started out with this huge ecosystem strategy that she's known for. As a matter of fact, no, my ecosystem started out with this $5 video ad. This alone got me plenty of clients. This is one of my workshops that I, that I do um, locally for brick and mortar businesses. This is one of my first ones. Whenever I still lived in Phoenix, I was still working in TV. Um, you can see there, I've got Dunkin' Donuts um, munchkins and we've got some mimosas in there. I ran a Facebook event. I went to the chamber and I was like, hey, I'm going to start hosting these social savvy events. And I'm just going to teach you guys how to do this simple $5 ad. And I got a lot of clients. Like, as a matter of fact, I booked out my first slot in all of my, my agency stuff with 
these simple $5 ads. That was the only tactic I had in my pocket. I didn't even know what a webinar is at this point. I didn't know what any, like, I didn't even know what a sales funnel was at this point. Like, I just know these $5 ads are going to bring in more businesses. I was good at video. I had done video, right? I started working in television in 2002. And so at this time, I'm still having a full-time job. But what was really important about this particular scenario is I was going to where my audience is, right? I didn't just stay online. I was like, you know what? Probably be a good idea to go and talk to people in person too. So the first few months, I helped mostly brick and mortar. And then I started like attracting network marketing businesses, right? Because a lot of network marketers go to those local networking events. They go to chamber meetings. They go to all these things, right? So the, the very first people that I helped were brick and mortar people and network marketing businesses. This next piece is super important because it became one of the major drivers of my strategy that you guys know now. So because I hung out with a lot of network marketers, a lot of network marketers actually started showing up in my newsfeed, right? So my newsfeed was flooded with both. I noticed something that network marketers were doing that piqued my interest, and then I had an idea. So back in 2018, network marketers were being taught these comment ladder type posts, right? They would be like, hey, it's winning Wednesday. Um, drop a drop a line below if you know what business you what business you have and what deals you have for everyone else these comment ladders right where people were just commenting and one thing that i noticed was every time someone would comment on that network marketer's post it got knocked back to the top of the news feed and i was like oh, that's really interesting and so as i started going live i was like man i was like my videos are doing okay, but I'm really lacking engagement. I wonder if next time I go live, I actually have a Google document that shows people how to actually implement the strategy. I wonder if they'll comment and get my video in the newsfeed. I went live and I gave away this Google document and lo and behold, people were commenting for it. So now I didn't have to wait for people to come into my, my inbox for, to ask me about me running ads. They were asking me to come into their inbox to give them this free thing that showed them how to do the ads. Whoa, game changer. But do you see how like by me doing the frequency, I was able to uncover yet another part that would become a main driver of my ecosystem. And so now... I have a $5 ad and I have a two-step strategy, which are still, by the way, two of the biggest pillars that make my ecosystem work. But you guys see how like I started off with just a single tactic and I just went frequency. I went all in on that. And then it brought in more. And so a lot of you guys right now, if you did the frequency, you would figure out all of the other moving parts through conversations. And that's why conversations are so, so important because there's something right now that you're going to uncover by doing all of this content that you don't even know yet. I guarantee it. Every single person is going to discover something that is going to be a pivotal moment in their business. And they're going to find it out by having conversations that came from doing the content. So what does that content framework actually look like? Okay. I'm going to give you guys a Christmas present. You guys ready for this? If this is the only thing that you did for 90 days, you'd be ahead of most of your competition by Christmas. I'm gonna say that one more time. If this is the only thing that you guys do, like over the next 90 days, you're gonna be ahead of most of your competition by Christmas, right? We're in July, there's six months of work. All you gotta do is stay consistent, okay? So I got a little Alex Harmozy tweet right here. It made sense with what I was talking about today. So I was like, holy crap, this is perfect. I saw this two days ago as I was building my deck. So the framework that makes your content unique to you, right? State the problem. Here's what I did to solve that problem. Here's how I did it. And here's what happened. It's all the, that's the only framework you need. What's the problem? Here's what I did to solve the problem. Here's how I did it, and here's what happened. I'm going to get Mr. Alex Harmozy to bring this point home. 
Here's why this works so well. He says, everyone can make the same promise, but no one can have the same proof. It's very powerful, right? It's a very short tweet, but it's got a lot of power in it because it's talking about what's going on right now in the online coaching space where everyone's copying each other's offers. Someone's taking a course and then going and creating the same course line by line, a lot of copycat stuff going around, but no one can copy the social proof that you get from solving people's problems. And that's why this framework is so powerful. That's why a lot of times you'll see me doing a lot of over the shoulder videos. Here's how I did it. Here's the problem, right? Here's what I did to solve the problem. I'll actually show you guys what this looks like. So this is actually one of my very first case studies. Um, a guy named Wayne, he was in Austin, Texas. And he was a, well, he's a, he does a lot of things. He's a pilot, but he also, as a side hustle, um, he would rent those, uh, those photo booths at weddings. And his business was literally going bankrupt. And he came across my, one of my $5 ad videos and he's like, will this work? And I said, I don't know. Let's try it. Let's do something that my mentor calls engage the field. Let's go do it. Look at the data and see what happens. And so here's what that piece of content looked like after I was done working with him, right? State the problem. Well, the wedding booth vendor was going out of business because he couldn't get enough bookings, right? Here's what I did to solve that problem. I ran $5 ads to people who just got engaged in Austin, Texas. Here's how I did it. And I did an over the shoulder of the ad and the ads manager setup, pretty simple. And here's what happened. It's a true story. His name's Wayne. If you ever see Wayne on my profile, he'll he'll always like say, hey, Laurel helped me like get my business. He got his business out of debt the first 30 days we ran the strategy. He had enough bookings to pay off the vendor for the for the photography machine and he had I want to say he had $5 left over. It was something very ironic. It was something very, but he's like, I literally have, I'm $5 in the green. I never forget that when he texted me that. This is one of my very first clients. And I was like, holy crap. So here's the thing. This is, someone just asked a really, actually there's two really great questions here that I want to address. So I'm going to, I'm going to answer Julia's first. She says, what if your coaching is confidential? So you cannot use your client as social proof. You don't have to use their name. You can use you can use a scenario that doesn't give like give like away who they are. Yeah, don't use specifics. Use the story or the scenario. That's fine. Wayne gives me permission to use his story here all the time. Most most of my clients are very happy with what I do. And so they don't most of the time they don't mind me giving it away. Um, and so Andrea says, so no more give me five minutes power content style content. Just so you guys know, this is power content. This is just framework. You're still going to have your headline promise of value and everything, but this is the framework for the actual content piece. Does that make sense? So I'd still have, you know, here, you know, um, a wedding, a wedding, a wedding photographer almost went out of business because of his overhead. Give me the next five minutes. And I'm going to show you how a $5 ad saved his business. And then I would go in and do the, the framework. So, and, and this is something that I'm glad that you asked that question. The power content framework is used all the time, whether I'm writing out content, whether I am like, as a matter of fact, I had a student who um, wrote a blog post the other day and he did it in my power content style. It was really cool. A lot of people use my power content framework for podcast episodes. A lot of people use my power content framework for courses. Like every course opens up with, hey, give me the next five minutes and you're going to learn X, Y, Z. It's a very powerful framework. Like any type of content that I do, I'm always going to have a headline promise of value um, because it gets more views and it keeps people longer. Yep. So Stacy says, how would you show if you don't have stats? Would you just walk through the framework on the screen? Absolutely. Anything visual, right? Remember how I started this video off with the football field? It was very visual, right? But it drove my point home. Anytime that we can show visuals, um, I love whiteboard videos. Whiteboard videos are super, super awesome. I think it's because subconsciously, that's what we did as kids when the teacher walked into the room. We were she commit she always commanded our attention, you know. And so I think we're trained since we're young to like when people are in front of a whiteboard or a chalkboard, like we always just pay attention because of that. But 
this is a super helpful framework. And don't worry, you guys are going to get this. I'm actually going to put this underneath the get ready protocol in the organic foundations, because I think that this is a really good intro training what we're doing. Don't you guys think right now like an intro to doing content so that you guys can understand it's not about ads, it's not about organic, it's about just content, right? And so here's a fun little exercise. Pamela's like, oh, I'm so tired of seeing this exercise. Uh, my Lean on Laurel students are always, are uh, because anytime they need me to help me, they want my help with their content, I make them fill out this form. So state the problem, prove the problem to be true with real data. How are your all ideal clients trying to solve that problem themselves? Why doesn't that work? What is your solution to that problem? Why does your solution work? How does your solution work? in three to five steps, a success story that validates your solution, and then the resource that accelerates getting to that solution, which is the volume bomb, right? So this is just a really fun framework. And don't worry, you guys have this. Um, I'm going to make sure that it, it's linked underneath this video. But that's what, that's what it looks like. I'm not going to spend too much time on it because I'm actually going to give you guys the framework and the exercise that I actually did with clients so that you guys can see not only in the way that I do it, but also the way that they do it. Now, this is a question I get asked a lot, Laurel, how do you put out so much content? Here's how it starts. And I'm gonna show you guys what this looks like. Um, funny, funny story too. This is how Alex Harmozy does it. So when he said, when he said he did this, I was like, hell yeah, that's what I do too. Hell yeah. Um, but so this is what I do, right? I used to write whenever I had an idea, I used to type things in my iPhone's um, little, uh, what do you call it? Uh, having a brain fart right now. The little tablet thing, right? The notepad, right? Yes, thank you. Thank you guys. Notes, right? I started doing it on Twitter. I would do it as tweets. And then that tweet, that's what it looks like. But then it gets, that tweet gets turned into a shorts or reels in a TikTok. So literally I read my tweet on video. And that's why that's what that's how I get my shorts. And then I also use it as a long form text post on Facebook and LinkedIn. And then the last thing I do is I make a long form video for YouTube, Facebook and LinkedIn. So this is what that would look like, right? I told you guys a while ago that that tweet that I was showing you guys nine out of 10 business owners I do strategy calls with fail to answer this one question. And that's a huge problem. What problem do you solve? Blah, 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 right? If you look right here, oops, I did it as a short. This went on Instagram. As a matter of fact, it went on yesterday. Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok. Um, yesterday, oops, I keep clicking. Why don't y'all tell me to stop doing that? <laughs> you guys can tell I never use the presenter thing, but someone complained that I wasn't using the presenter on the Google thing. So I'm practicing here, so forgive me. Um, but you can see on the right-hand side, that's the post that I did yesterday and it got 74 comments. And what was the thing that people were commenting for? This YouTube video where I walk you guys through the exercise. And so that's actually going to be, right, the thing that I'm going to give you guys because it's this exercise, um, the problem exercise. Yeah, so Andrea says, thank you. Um, I thought you started with the video. I know, right? You would think, but I actually start with a tweet. So tweet, short, long form, then long form video. So Keith says, I've been doing it on threads. In that case, how do you decide to post in other places? Frequency. I do. I just do it. I just do it. It's literally what I do. I'm like, I'm pumping out more content now than I ever have before. Because now, remember, I told you guys, it's all about the goal. If your goal is to get messenger conversations and you need to actually like do messenger conversations and spend time having messenger conversations, you're probably not going to do three or four posts a day like I do now. But remember, I'm at a different level now. My goal is to be the female Harmozy. Harmozy posts, I don't know, 20 posts a day. I'm only at like three to four a day, but that's my goal, right? Remember at the beginning, it's all about the goal. If you need cash flow, remember, I don't need cash flow. I don't need like my, both my stuff's full. So now it's all about brand awareness and impressions. And so I have a completely different goal than a lot of it, right? But this is but this is this is my content flow. It starts as a tweet, then I read them as my shorts. I use them as long form posts on Facebook and then they get turned into a long form YouTube video. Yeah. Harmozy spends a million a month on content creation. I believe it. I'm definitely not because that's like what I make in a year. <laughs> I can't I definitely can't spend a million but by the way, like my wife and I are doing this all ourselves. 
and there's some like there's some shortcuts and stuff that I have inside the seven dollar program. I don't know if you guys have seen um, that video where I showed you guys how to knock out a YouTube thumbnail in, in less than four minutes. It's it's underneath the YouTube section in the library, but Canva is like has been the ultimate shortcut. I'm usually a Photoshop girl, but um, but just make sure that inside the seven dollar program, you guys get like all of the specifics on on putting this stuff together inside the library section. Also, by the way. There's a whole bunch of posts that have made me a lot of money that you guys can literally swipe and use yourself. So if you are stuck on where, like if you go inside the 7 program, this YouTube advertising video right here will show you how to, how to crank out um, YouTube thumbnails right here. Um, this one right here. Like I literally did, I think this video, yeah, this video I showed you guys how I did this one in four minutes, including taking the picture, by the way. Um, so I did it. I knocked it out in less than four minutes, by the way, I'm, I'm only using this camera right here to do the, to do these pictures for my thumbnails, by the way. So I'm not doing anything fancy. Um, but if you go here, you can see 42 written posts that made me money. So Claire just asked me a question. That's really, really a good one to clarify. The text copy from the tweet is the repurposed, um, from the tweet is repurposed in the Facebook post or because the tweet is a snippet, you expand more on the Facebook post. It's the exact same thing. I have a Twitter pro account, so I can go as long as I want in my tweets. I don't have to stick to the 280 characters. Um, that was a really great question, Clara. Nice to see you, by the way. I love, I love whenever the same people show up. I love it. I love it. I love it. Let's see. Keith says, do you wait on validation of the post or just take it and post it everywhere? I just take it and post it everywhere. Frequency. I hope you guys are taking this away from today. Frequency. Everyone here needs frequency. You need as many posts as possible right now. Now, for some of you guys, that might be one a day. But remember, it's a conveyor belt thing, right? The more that you do, the faster that conveyor belt goes and tries to figure out like what your audience wants, right? Or you just use ads. Either way, okay? Let's turbocharge it. Do you guys want to see a diagram of what my, my flow looks like? Just to kind of give you guys an idea. By the way, this is going to be my flow. Um, but I want you guys just to see my brain, the way that it work, the way that my brain works as far as like putting out a roadmap. So this is what, this is what my content strategy looks like. So, but remember it, it all goes back to the goal. What did I tell you guys? My two goals were one hundred messenger conversations every week and two female Hermosi, right? My two goals, right? How am I going to do that? Well, I got to keep my programs full, right? I don't want to go broke being trying to be the female Hermosi, right? I still got to keep my business afloat. So I still have to have my 100 messenger conversations. And two, I have to work on my brand awareness, meaning I have to build my YouTube channel. So one of the things that you're going to see is my strategy is built to do two things. One, to get messenger conversations and two, to get YouTube views. So you can see here, I'm running $5 ads. Oops. $5 ads on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube, which by the way, I just added, remember the, the YouTube advertising of the, of the ecosystem walks you through it step-by-step. Step. So I'm running $5 ads. By the way, I'm only running power content right now, power content ads. And we have over 700 people on the waiting list for the $7 program in a month and a half. Over 700 people are on the wait list right now to get in, which by the way, if you are wanting a golden ticket, I'm going to throw you a link in the chat right now. Add before I forget, add coaching for seven.com slash checkout to, um, by the way, that's the backdoor link. So if you're in the $7 program and you lose, you lose your access because a credit card or whatever, everyone save this link right here. This is the back door. You can skip the wait list. So everyone copied that. Um, but don't share it right with people because we don't want just any Tom, Dick and Harry come into the seven L program and messing up our vibe. Right. So, uh, don't just give it to anybody, but, um, if you were here for the golden ticket, it, I just dropped it, the link inside the, and you can join the seven dollar program today. Anyway, so this is what, this is what my, my pattern looks like. So again, it's power content and then ads that drive views to my YouTube channel and, or to my DMs. So a couple of those ads, what they actually look like. This is, I do stories and link people to my YouTube channel. So it's just basically, I'm taking screenshots, nothing fancy. I'm sending people to my YouTube channel. And you could actually tell that the people who watch my YouTube channel are a lot of the people who are in this program and also follow me on Instagram because the amount of people in this program, my YouTube subscribers and my Instagram 
are all like kind of like the same like it's it's very similar in like audience sizes um which is awesome so this is how i i use stories to drive people to youtube you're also going to see me use um a lot of these uh, DM strategies to get people to my YouTube channel as well. Because remember, all of my programs are full. I'm not having messenger conversations to get people into my program, they're full. So now I'm using the DMs to get people to watch more of my YouTube videos, right? Because if something happens and I lose my Facebook account, I can still retarget all of y'all on YouTube, right? So that's what this strategy looks like. My stories to DMs, I, ha I have something that says, you know, hey, like message me DCA. So when people message me DCA, I have something pre-programmed in Instagram Messenger. You can actually set up responses that when people do that, you can literally hit a button and choose which answer you want to give them. Um, it's just like a little automation. You can, you know, I, I might start using mini chat um, to do this because remember, I don't need to have conversations to get people into my program. They're full. A lot of you guys need to manually have the messenger conversations. And I think a lot of people, that's what they miss about my strategy is they miss, like, if you need cash flow, you need to have messenger conversations. You need to use the messenger flame framework in order to get clients. My strategy right now for me personally, I'm not doing this to get clients. I'm doing this to increase my reach. So I think that that's super important. Like, but it all goes back to the goal, right? There's some of you guys here who have the same goal as me. You might just want to get in front of more people. And so, but but you see how I'm using the same strategy to not only build my authority and get more messenger conversations. It's the same strategy you guys are using to make sales. Very similar. And then reels, right? To get comments. Same thing. Remember, all goes back to what's the goal? We want to, one, me, I personally want to get 100 messenger conversations a week. And two, I want to become the female Hermosi. That's it. Pretty easy, huh? Like, pretty, pretty simple. It's, it's, you know, the hard part though, guys, is the mundane. It gets boring, but it's the work that has to be done. Right. Yeah. You want to see the real slides? Yep. Let's see. Chris says, this is cool. I have to go meet a client. I'm excited to utilize this. Thanks so much. Yeah. You're very welcome. Super valuable. Awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. But yeah, I'll make sure that you guys get these this slide presentation and every, you guys know I'm gonna give you guys all of, all of this stuff. But I'm gonna put it in the I'm gonna put it in the get ready protocol underneath the content capital because I think this is a good intro to that content capital. Which by the way, if you haven't watched that content capital seven videos, I think I did a seven day live. I I was gonna actually reshoot it. And I was watching it and I was like, holy crap, this is still so good. Like there's no need to reshoot it. I was going to update it, but I'm like, it's, so I double checked everything. Um, is there, Fitz just asked, is there a video where you break down that document? I am not sure what document you're talking about, but, um, but yeah, there's like there, the, the seven day content capital. If you have not watched it, it shows you how to get all of your power content pieces. There's the 15 pieces of content exercise. There's the goal document, solvable problem, all of that fun stuff. Um, but yeah, you guys are going to get this document. I told you guys that you're going to get it underneath the replay. It's going to go inside the Get Ready Protocol. And with that, I am out of LaCroix. So you guys know what that means is uh, I, I can't talk anymore. I, I've got I've, I got to go get another LaCroix, right? But I also have another appointment to get to. But was this helpful today? How many of you guys, like before I leave, right? I've got I've got a minute before my wife comes in here and says, your next appointment, right? Um, I want to know in the comments, what was the one, what was the one aha moment today where you were like, I I knew this, but I didn't know that. What was the I'm just curious, what's the what's the one thing that was that that I want to know frequency, yeah. Football field from the tweet, volume. Okay, this makes me feel a lot better uh like a better about this because i you guys are leaving with that one thing remember it's all about taking that one thing and being like that's the one thing i needed and i'm gonna go do it right because it was pointless for you to be here today if you don't take that one thing and go do it right so awesome man i'm loving all of this i love i love all of this thank you guys so much for joining me today um i will see you guys on the next one. i'll see you guys in the facebook group and then i know i got i owe you guys an ask laurel live today 
It's going to get done. I promise it's probably going to be a little late, <laughs> but I know I owe you guys one today, but um, I will see you guys in the Facebook group. I love all of you guys. Let's crush the rest of the year. And remember there's a Christmas present, right? All you got to do is do, do this every day for the next six months and boom, you're going to be ahead of your competitors by Christmas. Bye guys.